So thank you for your time. Like I said earlier, your stories and experiences are valuable to us at UTRGV Special Collections Archives and the Voices Project. Particularly for us at UTRGV Special Collections, we are committed to preserving the stories of Mexican Americans and Latinos from South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley. And those who work closely with these populations during this COVID-19 pandemic. Because you're a business owner who cares for the physical safety and mental well-being of the people in the community of Brownsville, Texas, and because you are a father, brother, and friend who is knowledgeable of the ways COVID-19 has affected others in his inner circle, I know you have many meaningful stories and experiences to share on how COVID has impacted these roles you carry out in your life. <clears throat> so before I ask you to share your stories about your life in this pandemic, tell us who is Saul Sandoval. I am Saul Sandoval. I'm an industrial pipe fitter assistant superintendent. I am a child care center owner and director, a father of three children, one wife for over 20 years, and I'm happy. Um, that's a little bit of my life, personal. Okay, so the first question I want to ask you is, when did you first hear about COVID-19? How did you learn about it? Radio, TV, children, social media? We heard about it on December 2019 by social media and our community. <clears throat> what was your first reaction to the information about COVID-19? The information that we got was, and that we saw around in the community and the people we knew that got infected was uh, serious and uh, nothing to play with and to take, uh, take uh, safety measures. Okay, at what point did you realize this pandemic was a serious life altering event or do you not think it's serious? Yes, it is because we saw in for, uh, real close to people that we know that got infected and uh, they're no longer here, that they, they, they did die and, uh, and are right now have uh, consequences on their health. Um, so yes, it was real serious. Over the last few months, what news media, social media or other sources do you rely on to keep you informed about the coronavirus? We use a little bit of social media. We use a little bit of the news, the old news, and uh, and our community. You know, word by mouth that you know stories that we could share and hear and get information. Can you share with me what you understand about COVID nineteen as an infectious disease and any of its variants? Well, we what well, we know and we saw was that it was more than a flu. You know, it took out the symptoms, but once you have it, you can tell right away, you, you know, you feel weaker. You go, your, your lungs, they, they attack the lungs. And from there, well, everything happens, you know, for the worse. Can you share with me what you don't understand about this new virus? Uh, just the timing and then how how it went up you know how he got first started it's kind of uh uh not not ordinary like like we have we know the, the seasons of the year and you know we know we have all these kinds of uh, viruses but this one was was a special one you know it, it was something that why now that's the question. Why now? And and uh, I mean, why in, in the whole world? So, do you have 
a vaccination story you would like to share with me now or perhaps later in this interview? Uh, vaccines, they're barely coming. They're coming out. There are still lab work they're working on. And they are, they are getting vaccinated right now at this time, this moment, essential personnel and, and other people that are being now getting green light to take vaccines. So we're not there yet. Can you tell me what you know about the various vaccines available to the public? How do you feel about these vaccines? Well, it's too fast. So just imagine we have vaccines that have been here for years and there's consequences when you, when you take them. And uh, so, you know, there's going to be consequences with these vaccines too. I mean, it's so, everything's going so fast and uh, not enough uh, lab work and, and not enough years to see what, what reactions we're going to get. Do your family members hold the same beliefs as you about COVID-19 or are there some who take it more seriously or lightly? No, I think we're on the same page. We talk about it and uh, we're on the same page. The thing is, our our age runs a factor. We're in the 30s and 20s of my family, so and and healthy. So, you know, we're we're still debating on that, you know, uh, of the vaccinations. Okay, so for these next set of questions, I'd like to talk about how you've seen COVID-19 affect family members, friends, and how you compare the response to COVID-19 in this area. Okay, um, with the first question, well, how old are you? I'm 38. Do you have a family? Yes. Who is in your family? I have uh, three children and my wife. Does anyone in your family suffer from any type of medical issue? We, my wife, my wife does have diabetes and high blood pressure. So going based off this information, you were really precautious when the lockdown came into play. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, life is priceless. So I put a stop on everything in my life. Stop and and uh, bunker down with my family and and uh, and try to ride the waves. There were some big waves. So yes. How did online school affect your children? It didn't. I think it's going to be the the new norm, and uh, that's the future. So. From what you're saying, it benefited them instead of troubling them. Oh yes, yes, of course. Uh, even even uh, even the people that we know, personnel that works in schools, you know, they they had to go. But you know, uh, there's consequences for them. But you know, on us and our children, you know, there we we had them at the house just to keep them safe. Overall, how did the pandemic affect your family? Well, the only thing that could, that affected was um, we all gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the following questions are about your career. So what is your occupation? I know you stated before that you have multiple. Yes, yes. So, so right now I am uh, running a child care center um, and I have uh, some real estate uh, properties and besides my career but my on my career I put a stop on it because of COVID-19 uh, there they preach safety but they don't actually do it so at me as a as a as an employee of a big company worldwide we know what steps they're taking and 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 I decided just to uh, stop right now and, and be with my family okay so in your career how did the pandemic affect your job well, I spoke with a lot of coworkers, uh, and they did. Uh, some are not here no more. You know, some the elderly, the old uh, gentlemen that that worked there in, in in my field, they're they're passed. They passed away, and the young guys. Uh, I spoke with a couple of my 
my employees and uh, they, uh, they get sick, really sick. And uh, now they have consequences on their health. So, and there were the, the main people or the main person uh, of the family, you know, bringing the money in for, for the stability of their family. So it's really hard. Okay, so um, people in your job, were they let go of? Were they fired? Yes, yes. Uh, it was real hard for them and for a lot of people. You know, in my field, they got laid off, uh, got fired because they didn't go because they were afraid of, of contracting a COVID. And, uh, and a lot of people, and then politics, politics came in place so all that affected them you know we had a, we were in a it was a tough year already and then and then politically you know it was another another wave so it was really hard to get it this uh virus under control and and all the employees did, did suffer a lot you know they they lost houses they they got divorced they they got sick and it did affect a lot of people so some people in your job, based on like some information you gave me a couple seconds ago, some people did leave, they quit their job. Yes, yes. The thing is, a lot of people, they preach whatever they, they're trying to get, you know, across the, the aisle, whatever the field is, but they don't actually do it. So it's real hard to have a, a role model uh, an honest role model. So whenever you have an honest role model doing the right thing, your fellow coworkers or the business or the company, whatever you're running, it's really hard to, to get the information out there. You know, not everybody plays the same rules. So yes, it's real hard. So earlier in the interview, you mentioned you have a business. What yeah. is it? We have a, a child care center uh, in in uh, in my community, uh, in my hometown, and um, we've struggled. We've been doing day by day, day by day. We've been always praying, you know, praying a lot. Hopefully, you know, we won't have any children infected, parents and friends and neighbors, and you know, but it's been a, it's been a a tough year, a uh, tough year, but. You know, there's always two sides to a coin and the other side, it's, it's, it's put a lot of people in, in consciously into the family that we were losing, you know, uh, the family, family um, values. And hopefully this, this little pandemic, uh, well, huge pandemic worldwide, you know, brought everybody to a standstill and, and, and start thinking how life is. You know, it's not material. It's not, you know, it's a, it's, it's family, you know, it's just generation after generation. We have to enjoy every day of our lives. Okay. So from what I'm getting at, did the pandemic affect your business? Well, the business were day by day and uh, economically, yes but we were still open for business. So that was that was the good thing compared to some other businesses that got locked down or, or got shut down. You know, we were day by day, but, uh, but they didn't have to close down like the other ones. So since the pandemic started, you haven't closed your business or were there like a certain period of time where you did have to? Yeah, we uh, there was a period when uh, everything came out to to public. You know, we already knew locally that something was going wrong since early 2020. That this wasn't something uh, normal um, until March. That you know, governments couldn't hide it no more. You know, they had to tell the public that it was going. They you know it, it wasn't under control. So on March that it was a big wave of people getting sick and dying. We did stand, we 
the whole country and, and, and us, we, we had to go into a lockdown to kind of stop the spread. And uh, yeah, we were locked down and, and shut down for a month, month and a half. Um, what changes were made to your business because of the pandemic? Like, did you change anything that you wouldn't do before and now you do? Well, we, we, we didn't change our, our environment stayed the same. Our, uh, the physicality of the, of the structure of the business stayed the same. Just our steps that we took were a little bit more on the safety side and we were taking guidelines by CDC and that did help and uh, it's helping. And, and, and what I saw and what that I spoke with a lot of parents this whole year, the 2020, was that we all got less sick, you know, with the steps that we were taking, you know, a lot of people criticize the face mask. Of course, it's awkward. It's uncomfortable, you know, using a, wear, a face mask. Uh, but, and, and, uh, and, but we didn't get sick compared to years before, you know, kids and, and family members, you know, with the flu season and all that stuff. So yeah, we, we used the CDC guidelines and it's, it's been helping a lot. What steps in your business did you take to, um, make it safer? Well, we had, uh, we, we first talked to our parents. The good thing is we're real close with our parents. You know, we talk to them daily and, and uh, I have this business, but, you know, I'm not running it as a business. I'm running more as a, like a community group or, or like a little uh, like a, a club, like, like a club. So we can get all along and, and, uh, and have more open to uh, communications, you know, so more like a family style uh, a business with everybody. So we spoke and we all got together and we went one by one and, and, and told them that this was serious and that we were going to put uh, our safety at 100% and, and uh, our actions there in our daycare, but we needed their help, you know, so they wouldn't get sick or they, would, they won't get it or they wouldn't spread it, you know, that if we all work together, um, we, we have a, a struggling year, but a safe year. Yes, well... How did you know that like a child wouldn't come infected? Like well, what were the steps you took before allowing a child to go into your business? Well, well, common sense uh, on, the, on the health wise, I'm not a professional on health, but you know, uh, but we all know that when you're young and uh, you're more stronger, your immune system is stronger and, and evolving. So when you get older, you know, we don't do the, the things that we're, we did when we were young. So we knew that the kids are stronger and the youth is stronger than the adults. So when the children went into your business, they just went in? You didn't check for anything? Most businesses now would... Yeah, we have a, a little social distancing, the six feet apart that, you know, that went in place. Mm -hmm. That's where the parents and outside our, our business. But once uh, the kids go in inside our business, well, they wear face masks and they got a face mask, so they got double double the gear. And uh, that helps because, you know, they're not going to contact M besides uh, the guidelines, CDC guidelines with uh, hand sanitizers and washing their hands, and, you know, more often than usual, you know, like before, you know, we're doing them constantly and constantly. Um, that would keep us and our children safe. Okay, well, uh, so in your career, the pandemic did affect your job. Yes, it did. The workforce was was uh, less. One, people were dying. Two, people were scared of contracting COVID. And three, the, the businesses were 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 struggling. You know, and all kinds of uh, getting contracts, getting new construction bids. You know, all kinds of stuff that goes in our in our field of industrial. Okay, so final, these are final questions. Now to close. Um, are you satisfied with the local response to COVID-19 in Brownsville, Texas, Cameron County? Well, we did our part. We did our part and uh, it's really hard, you know, 
I am a supervisor for over 20, for over 15 years with adult people, adult personnel, employees. And now I'm an owner for over, well, over eight years on our childcare center with children and that education, early childhood education. And it's different because uh, we could, we could uh, change our generation futures to come, but the adults, it's really hard. So, you know, we know, I know that a lot of people they didn't follow along and, and they thought it was just a, a hoax and, and, and weren't going and following guidelines. But, you know, they would see that a lot of people like us who are a little bit more responsible were, were following and doing it, you know? And, and so I didn't think it was a hundred percent our community that, that were doing it, but, you know, we're satisfied uh, that not a lot of people got, you know, the numbers weren't higher than, than they were expecting. Are you, are you satisfied with the state response to COVID-19 led by Texas? Well, on the steps, um, and CDC the guidelines, Florida. yes. And then on the Texas part, they, they, they weren't together because we have a local, our local government and then our state and then federal. But our local government, I can't, I can't, uh, say anything on our local government they did take action and what they're doing and what they mandated was you know taking place so i was satisfied with my local i was satisfied with the early steps that our state government uh, government uh, governor or government uh, were taking now towards the end that we we're trying to you know finish this uh, pandemic now they were so on the complacent side that you know they're not taking it seriously like what they did at the beginning. So this is the, the, the tough part of the final. So uh, you weren't really satisfied with the decisions made by the governor? Yeah, well. You thought it was too early? At the beginning, everything was, was, they took the right things, the right steps and everything. But, you know, at the middle, at the middle part, they getting, we were getting so complacent uh, of their daily routine. So, you know, we were like, you know, we're choosing 100% satisfied. I would, between the middle part of this pandemic, I would say 60%. And then we were seeing the, the, our goal to get the vaccines and, and get everything going, you know, but then holiday season started coming up for summer and our state governor, they said that, you know, forget about all these mandates and forget about our guidelines and it's over, which it's not over yet. You know, they're still vaccinating. So they're sending mixed messages and that's what I'm not satisfied on the, towards the end part of, uh, of this pandemic. Do you feel now the schools are opening, do you feel that their men, they're saying for the upcoming school year, it's mandatory for children to be going. Do you feel that you're okay with that? Well, right now we are in April and I'm not, I'm not satisfied, you know, uh, for them to go in August. What happened? Well, they just opened up uh, the TEA uh, asking all our, our districts, the school districts to open for their STAR test. That's perfectly fine, but they were they're trying to mandate it and they did go, they told children to go face to face. And, uh, you know, my son went and took the, the STARS and there was no guidelines. There was no safety protocols for them. Everybody was, you know, like sardines, you know, everybody was placed <laughs> together place together on, on, on their gym or whatever the class where they were going to we'll take their stars and they were all jammed up. And, uh, and he, he told me that, you know, you know, we, we do our, in our business, on our childcare center, they know because I educate them and I let them know what's going on and, and, and tell them the steps we have to take care of ourselves. And I said, how come they're not following those rules that the way we are on the private sector and, uh, and then the public, they were preaching and they were calling us to let the children go back and everything. We do that. They're stating that everything's uh, safety is number one on stuff. And once my children get there, 
it's the opposite. They're not, they don't care. They just, they're not doing it. So imagine if they have a bad reputation. So how do they think it's a way we control, we can't control parents and children to go back to school. Of course not. You have a bad reputation. You can't be role models. They preach they're role models, but you know, they don't, they don't, they don't actually do it. So me, technically I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure they're going to go back to on August. I, I'm, I'm still debating what I'm going to do with them understandable are you satisfied with the current national response to COVID-19 led by President Biden and his administration so far what he's preached he's doing but we have we have this old generation of uh of an old school that they are still here with us and they are still on on politically involved so it's really hard for again our youngsters, our young generation, um, you know, starting for them to make uh, decisions on politics, you know, which we have uh, some politicians right now that are against the new president. Uh, I am satisfied what he preached and what he was trying to make and what he ran for. So, you know, he's he's been helping with those packages uh, for everybody. So. I am satisfied the steps he's taking. What I'm not satisfied is that people, you know, they have politics views and that's what's not, you know, it's like a little tug of war, you know, we're all put into different directions. If you had the power to respond to COVID-19 with policies, laws, workplace decisions, what would you do differently? Well, first put leaders, leaders, you know, not, People that talk and we'll, we all can talk. Uh, or if I well, I'll put myself in, my, in that place, I would, you know, I would uh, act because that's, that's the leadership role. You act not for me, but for them, for the people. And uh, we only live life once. So I already know that I'm not taking anything when I die. So the material, I don't, I don't, I'm not hungry for it. I just, I, we need it for a day to day, but you know, I'm not, you know, pushing nothing on my kids that, you know, about materialize, you know, we just need their basics and to have, to be happy. So I would, I would preach and put politics in place and, and, and govern and laws that would, uh, I would help them look for their happiness and, and, uh, and go forward, not thinking, Oh, I'm going to make this, this new law because I have a little group of friends that, you know, we're going to get more than the other people. So that's that's the matter right now uh, that people, those politicians have, you know, they they don't think about the people, they're thinking about themselves. So me, if, if I was in those shoes, I would think about them, not not what I was gonna, you know, get get off. So what you would do differently is look out for others. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, everybody's got a role, and and politicians and and, and the lawmakers they have their role, but they don't actually um, do it. You know, they, they do it for their benefit. So that's, that is the, the main thing. And, and that's something that we have to tell our gener young generations, you know, teach them what's right from wrong and, and teach them, okay, well, this is, this career is based on this. You know, I guess nobody's, you know, taught, taught like a law or politics, you know, uh, to educate that. You know, what we talk about, teachers, police officers, you know, nurses, you know, but we don't ever talk about politicians, you know, so we have to, you know, and, and actually they're the ones making the laws and the regulations. Yes. So uh, going based off the answer of you wanting to help other people, what, what policies or laws or workplace decisions that, would you do differently? Like compared to the ones that they made, what would you do? We're talking about the COVID decisions or, or just the day-to-day? -day? No, the COVID decision. The COVID decisions. Well, I think it would have been, I, I think I would have attacked it a little bit harder and faster. You know, uh, we did it the first month. And if we would have done it in March that we all started, well, it started in March, our, our social media and media uh, getting to know in the government, telling everybody, but in April, we started shutting down. 
it would have done it for two more months, two more months. And with this package coming in, you know, I think it would have been a lot faster. And of course, everybody would be hurting, but what are they hurting for? Money. And we, and they did the stimulus packages. So why not do it then? And we would have got this all over a lot quicker. We would have done stimulus packages because a lot of people were complaining. And of course, they, they live paycheck to paycheck. But that's what they needed. And that's what they our government did, you know, after fights and fights on their political views. But if it was me, I would have just done it. Okay, you know what? Three months shut down. And here's your checks. Pay the bills. Let's go. Faster and easier. Okay, are there any other stories or experiences you would like to share with me that I have not asked you about? Uh, well, you didn't ask me about the race. The race is really, really important because uh, our world is based on different races. And here in the United States, it's mixed with a lot of races. So if you don't understand the races or ethnicity, so the people where well, you can't, pull together and it's real easy you know to uh, pull together if you, there's common ground and we're all looking for a stability and, and and life you know just a better life okay mr sandoval then thank you so much for your time and allowing me to do this interview with you this will be posted on online in an archive and will be also stored in a university library and hopefully for future generations to see. Good, God bless. Thank you.